morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 470, I believe it is, of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yay! Cryer Media. Recording day is Monday, September 16th, 2024. And I think it's going to be a nice day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him. Hey, Mr. Beaver A, I hope you had a lovely weekend. And with me is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to the podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Gor- Corvid Boom Publishing. <clears throat> Sorry, I have something in my throat. And CanadianTarot.com. Ah. Uh, it's going to be a mixed bag show today, uh, but it's a big day because it's a it's back to school day for the MPs. And oh, that's right. election that's day. Right. Yes. And it's the day of the public inquiry on uh, foreign interference that Skippy seemed to want so, 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 so very badly, but doesn't want anymore because he wants an election for some well, reason. Did you, uh, did you but before, no. how's your bet off today, sir? <laughs> um, I'm not awake yet. That's why you do. <laughs> I just sitting here tapping away. I could tell. <laughs> Entered the stuff, sent everything out, and I'm going. I wonder where. I wonder where he is. I wonder. I wonder. Then I get this message. I don't have a link. Oh crap! I forgot to send it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I got it. I got. I don't know. A dozen windows open here, off to the right, where I'm monitoring stuff. Plus, also seeking jobs and uh, auditioning for stuff. You know, just trying to generate revenue, generate an income. So, yeah, I'm a little preoccupied with a dozen different things. But did you happen to catch the caucus speech yesterday from Skippy the Wonder Pigeon? To be totally honest, I did not. Because my beaver sweetie and I took a lovely day trip to Prince Edward County. Oh, nice. And uh, just decided to tour some towns and villages around there. So um, I am... Well, not blissfully unaware because, I mean, Mm. apparently we've got our version of (sighs) eating the dogs and eating the cats. Yes. (sighs) Eating the pets of the people that live there. Uh, Canadian version, something like like nuclear winter or something. Carbon tax nuclear winter. Hide under your desk, something (laughs) like that. Like, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I I watched about ten minutes of it. Bridget and I were sitting here, and she's like, "I thought you were asleep." I wasn't watching; I was listening on the couch. I had a bit of a migraine, and I'm like, ten minutes in, I got. I'm like, I got to turn this crap off. I can't listen to somebody lie nonstop for ten minutes and just sit here, because that's what he did. Not only that, but he purposely mispronounces Jugmeet Singh's name. <sighs> Constantly, he does way. it intentionally. Yes, he does, because he says it. It's not like, 
I, I'm listening to some of the old, um, like recent episodes, right? As I'm writing episode descriptions, as we're catching up, and I'm noticing that even I am very inconsistent. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. really, really, I really try to make an effort to say jug meat. Yes, but there's every now and then, if we're just talking and my mind is going. Mm. You, you go back to the spelling, not the pronunciation. I go back to the spelling and the pronunciation, so it's very hard. But he puts so much emphasis on the jag. Yes. Yeah. That's why jag meat, right? It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, I think we should just start calling him Petey. Little Petey. Little Petey uh, Polyev. There's a lot of things I like to call him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeff, I think. Is, is <clears> but it's a family point. show. It's yeah. just that we're not that kind of family. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we'll occasionally drop a surgical strike of an F bomb when required or, or when the yeah. anger warrants it. But, you know, I've, I've been trying to do that a lot less, along with the fact that I, I want to be a better man and speak better of people and find better ways to express myself. Sometimes I just. I turn into the champ and I lose it. If you're old enough to know what the champ is, you'll get that <laughs> reference. I lose it. So, so uh, yeah, I watched it and I have the clip here. It's 25 minutes of uh, just pure hog swoggle, uh, absolute garbage coming out of his mouth. Lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. And, constantly misnaming people just just a pathetic excuse for a a politician let alone a human being and dare i say man okay i need to interrupt because i have questions what the heck is hawk swoggle (laughs) i've never heard that before bullshit (laughs) where does it come from oh it's it's a rural farming statement i've heard many times oh is it hog swoggle yeah okay I had heard hawk swoggle. I hawk, have, I've hawk. never, I have never heard that before. I've wow. Okay. I, I, I really like that. Actually, that's that's a cool one. I like that. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the conservatives had their caucus meeting on Sunday. I guess they only needed one day. Because it's the PP Purity Party now. So, I mean, what is there to discuss, really? It's more like you get your orders. I would assume. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was enjoying life. Um, <laughs> the Plaque Québécois, they had theirs in Montebello. The Liberals had theirs in Nanaimo. And, of course, the New Democrats had theirs in the Montreal area where there's a by election. So, um, they may be, uh, and I know that you, you pick these things earlier. Because, you know, you have to make the accommodations and facilities reservations for these types of things uh, when you're actually having an actual retreat, you know, that lasts a few days and not just I'm going to talk at you session. So um, not sure that the NDP had any way of knowing that the by-election was going to be then at that time when they picked it. But uh, in terms of competing in the by-election and, uh, you know, doing their con doing their policy retreat, uh, they win the prize for multitasking. Just saying. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, and Pierre, um, as Mr. Grizzly, uh, made a speech at that. And, um, well, I have. like I said, he really seems to want an election, which seems to be very much at odds with him wanting the public inquiry to happen. I mean, he wanted it so bad, he tried to destroy the reputation of a former governor general in the process. You think he'd want to stick around to see what uh, that yields, but it no, seems not. To investigate Beijing, not even China, just Beijing, and mm. not India, and not Russia, and not any other country. Mm. I'm saying timing. Yeah. Mr. Grizzly, what did the national... Pepe Le Pew have to say. Well, let's just have a look here, shall we? Oh, he's so happy. I want to start by reassuring all of you. Uh, I'm not going to force you to listen to the Rocky Balboa theme song today, as Justin Trudeau did in his caucus. Apparently, uh, part of his strategy to survive 
uh, the latest uprisings against his leadership was to force his caucus members to nod in agreement that he, in effect, in effect is Rocky Balboa. Um, of course, in every time Justin Trudeau sees a movie, he thinks of himself as the star performer, right? <laughs> the lights are on him, and most of all, he is the victim of all of these unfair shots, and he is battered and bloodied. This is from a man who inherited... The, from the biggest whining little crybaby on earth in a political sphere. That's, well, that's, actually, that would be Trump, but Pierre Polyev is right. But that's cool. the only thing that's bad about this part, actually. It's a really good analogy if you're on that side of the... Pol but he's just so smarmy. And he's just mm -hmm. so happy, right? And attacks journalists for asking him basic questions and then tries yeah, to... Sc anyway, all right, that's not here or there with this part. Let's keep going. Inherited a multi-million dollar trust fund from his grandfather, a famous name and political career from his father, who jets around the country and spends more than four... Uh, on. girl, please. Hold on. <laughs> You're the one... He emits more greenhouse gases than... I mean, this guy is gallivanting all over the country on the taxpayers' I mean, he's... Dollar. The prime minister has to travel internationally, actually, it's now and job. then, too. No, but now and then. So he's actually the guy that's gallivanting across the country because he has no reason to be in another country. Correct. <laughs> than 14,000 average Canadian families combined. But yet he is somehow the underdog and the victims. Well, my friends, I had a great summer traveling across this country. And in 214 events in all regions, he just said it. He just said it. He just said it. And I, I see just this. Said it. I know we're not supposed to look shame here like this, but uh, I saw a Kit, Chris, Kit Swanky, how you like his cowlick new hairdo? And I'm thinking, oh my God, and he's now got Melissa Lanceman's hair stylist. He's trying to become Melissa Lanceman. <laughs> You know how I used to. You know how I used to say that Jason Kenny and Heather Ste Heather Stephenson was just yes. Jason Kenny and bad drag because I never saw them in the same room together. Mm -hmm. I guess. Well, these two I've seen them in the same room together, so I can't say. But no. uh, they're becoming twins. Well, I've seen them stand way. side by side, so we know it's not the same person. But yeah, they're, they're starting. They're little... becoming twins. Okay, we'll continue. Across this vast and varied land, I ventured. Oh, no, not another story time. Okay, okay, so let me see if I get this correct. You just dumped on the Prime Minister for doing his job, and now you've got applause for telling us that you went to 216 events across this summer? Not doing your job. Not doing your job. Your job is to represent your constituents in your riding that you've not set foot in in I don't know how many years. Well, I mean, I mean he's also a party leader. I mean, he has to he is go a party to leader, but, but I mean, it's not but, an election. Exactly, but he's been campaigning as if the election has already started for about a year and a half ago rather than actual you know, doing the Job. work of, like, for example, developing policy and de communicating it to Canadians. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I ventured across the land from the fog-shrouded fishing villages of the Pacific oh, and the Atlantic, the fertile fields of the prairies, the bustling you remember the video. floors we saw. of Ontario, the frigid frontiers of the north. And I have witnessed in the men and women that I saw in these places, the real champions, the real fighters, the real Rocky Balboa Balboas, and they are going to have common sense conservatives axing the tax in their corners after the next carbon tax election. Now he's losing it. He's gone into the branding. Oh yeah. They've taken a lot of hits, though, these extraordinary people. They took the sucker punch called the carbon tax, which Trudeau famously promised would never go above 11 cents a liter. Never. Now that. it's 17 cents a liter, 60% higher. And he and the NDP liberal government mm. have voted to increase it over the next five and a half years by 300% to 61 cents a liter. My friends, this is not just a question of affordability. Obviously, if the existing tax is forced 2 million people to go to a food bank and force 25% That is patently false. No. That is a complete and utter lie. How Notice. do we know this? The University of Calgary showed us.
I noticed that the NDP is getting top billing now. Yeah. <sighs> we'll continue. Of our kids to go to school hungry. Obviously, there would be. Okay, let's let's just back that yes, up. Yes, yes. Okay, because this is key here. We'll repeat this is, it. This is super cute. This is this is adorable. If the existing tax has forced two million people to go to a food bank, and forced twenty five percent of our kids to go to school hungry, says the man who voted against feeding children. Yes, which but th that right there is the whole thing. If there are any PP supporters hate watching us right now, yes. He literally just complained about kids going to school hungry, and he had the opportunity to vote for a program that would make sure that no kid in school would be hungry, and that we could maximize our investment in education as well, because mm -hmm. what's the point of teaching people if you don't put them there in the best possible conditions to learn? But aside from that, like the it identified a problem. The problem even involves children. There was a solution to the problem he says exists. That he voted against. But he voted against it. But he's still going to use the problem to try to get your vote. I think if we look up the word hypocrisy in the dictionary, we'll see his photo. Because he just did it twice in three minutes. He did it with... Justin Trudeau's traveling all over the country. This summer, I traveled all over the country. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and Obviously, there would be... Well, the kids are going hungry, but I voted against feeding them. I know. I know. It's just... But again, you have to go back to during the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in he these stood programs. at a podium and he talked about costly government programs and said, they're conservatives. They do not believe in that. So if he's telling you about the kids that are going hungry, to fix that, you need a social program. He does not believe in that. He's not going to fix it. If he's telling you about people that can't find jobs, well, unemployment insurance or something like that, mm -hmm. job training programs, those are social programs. He doesn't up. believe in them. Yes. He has nothing for you. He tells you what the problem is, he points you towards the problem. He tells you who to blame for it. Yes. And then he puts a gun in your hand and he basically says, you know what to do. But he never actually promises that he's going to fix it for you, or very rarely. Interesting yes. comment here from Dan. And he certainly doesn't tell you how. Dan says, I visited a few food banks in my campaign. Not one single person said I'm here because of the carbon tax. Let's think about that for a minute. Mm-hmm. Are people going to food banks actually affected by paying the carbon regulatory recovery fee? At least an amount so great that would cause them. I mean, Come like on. even on, even the price of gas Come over on. the course of the summer, it's down. It was it's it was dropped. under a dollar forty a liter when we were on our way. Yes, on our trip yesterday. Yeah, and that's with thirty something cents right. carbon tax. Justin Trudeau never said he would never raise it. Mm -hmm. He said they would do five years, mm -hmm. and then they would look. Yes. And they saw the five years, and it was working. So now we're going for another five years. If it was going up for the first five, there is no reason to assume it wouldn't keep going up, especially since if you ever read anything about carbon taxes, that's the whole point, is you introduce them gradually, and they go up, and their whole purpose is to change behavior at the point of purchase. Duh. It's like literally behavioral economics 101. It's, it's just, it's just beyond, it's beyond, beyond. Okay, we'll continue. And, and we're not going to go on for much longer with this because he's about to lie so much in the next couple of minutes that you're going to want to vomit. Mass hunger and malnutrition with a tax this high. This is not just about people living in the cold. Obviously, our seniors would have to turn the heat down to 14 or 13 degrees Celsius just to make it through the winter with a tax that high. Why did, Obviously. He, why did he stress Celsius? Why did he stress that? You know why? Because he's speaking to Americans who don't understand. And he's speaking to supporters who wish they were American. At least that's my personal take. That on. would be if he said Fahrenheit. No, I know, but I think he said Celsius to, to reiterate the fact that, oh, yes, I'm in Canada now. 
Oh, gotcha. <laughs> right? Yes. Inflation would run rampant and people would not be able to leave their homes or drive anywhere. But this will shut down our entire economy. It would be a nuclear winter for our economy if we had God. the highest carbon tax in the world, which is what the NDP Liberals have voted to impose over the next five and a half years. Think of the factories. How would they get their inputs when there are no trucks that can afford to pull in and drop them off? Oh God. And how would they get their products to market when there's no trucks to drive in and pick them up? Those okay, trucks will all leave to another place how will they get their products to market if they don't have the things? How do we get our products to market if no other countries will buy them? Because we don't mean the basic carbon regulations and agreements that we have with them. The exactly. trade agreements, the basic trade agreements that we signed, international law. You're literally talking about violating international law. You're literally talking about tanking Canada's yes. good name that we sign on to other countries and actually sullying it by showing them that we are not of our word. Because... It's like, if we can't sell to the whole European Union and the United States and other countries with whom I have these agreements, all we're going to be able to sell, the nations that we're going to be able to sell to, mm -hmm. maybe don't have the money to buy as much of the stuff, number one, because, but they're all the countries that you keep on talking about when you talk about oil. Well, all these countries that, we that are not switching. not be dealing with, that's why we need yeah. to pump more gas out of Canada. Like and use our LNG. I mean, the guy is just, uh, he's all over the place, man. I know. I told you th th we're, we're three minutes in. Oh my God. And we're just all these, four minutes in. And all these things, nuclear winter, and we will be crippled. We will not be able to drive anymore. It's literally the reverse fever dream. Yeah. He's dog. Except, with, except without, you know, video clips put in, but he could literally take that part, this, this whole part that he's doing right now and do another bring home home video mm -hmm. with imported footage. I guess I can't believe when he was talking about going to all Canada, all the places he went, it's like, yes. dude, you're doing the video again orally. We remember the video. Mm -hmm. You might want to avoid that. It's like bringing that type of like imagery up again is like JD Vance talking about couches and Donald Trump talking about pussy. You just don't do it. What's wrong with you? Okay, we'll continue for a Please. couple more minutes before I can't handle it anymore. Maybe 75 kilometers away, where there is no carbon tax. All of our industries and our businesses would pour over the border into the United States to hire American workers, create American jobs, serve American farmers, all at Canadian expense. We're this doing better crazy carbon tax obsession of Justin Trudeau and the NDP is an existential threat to our economy and oh. our way of life. It is only a threat existentially to our economy and way of life. If you cancel it, you dumb chowder head. Every trade agreement we have with every European country and countries in the rest of the world are signing on to this. If you do not have a, either a carbon regulatory recovery fee or a green plan or a plan that has to do with reducing carbon and changing your ways to reduce carbon, you do not get to sign the contract, period. Trade comes to a screeching halt if you kill the carbon regulatory recovery fee. And that's what I'm calling it because it's not a tax. It's been proven by the government that it's not a tax. By the Supreme Court of Canada, it is not a tax. It's not a tax. He can't even tell the truth about acts the tax. Which one? Which one? Because the carbon regulatory recovery fee is not a tax. And um, what, 90% 90, 90 of us get more 80. back than we pay into it? 80% so 80, 80, of us. 80% of us get more back than we pay into it. Which means that if he kills this program, he has to come up with something quickly to keep the trade agreements in place. And there will be no rebate for you. I guarantee it. We'll continue. It's really, you know what? This thing where he says ax the tax, mm -hmm. right? It should just be really cancel the rebate. Yes, because that's all it will be. And what about Jagmeet Singh? He voted. First one. First one. 
24 times to keep or hike the carbon tax. Jagmeet Singh twice stood in the House of Commons and sold out the workers, the seniors, the farmers, the loggers who voted for him when he claimed he would be their ally. Instead, he wanted his pension, his $2.2 million. Oh, come on. You've had one since you were 31. And you can cash it in at 55. He has to wait till 65 because the rules changed. Like this. I mean, really? The hypocrisy on this man. Unbelievable. And people eat this shit up. Oh, yeah. And I don't understand why or how. Maybe because they don't know. Maybe because they're ignorant to the facts. And ignorant does not mean rude. It means you are unaware. <sighs> we'll continue for a minute or two. ...pension that doesn't kick in until next year. And so he sold you out and signed on to a costly carbon tax coalition with the most irresponsible inflationary prime minister. Okay. For the umpteenth millionth time, it is not a coalition. It never has been. Mm. By definition, it is not a coalition. But and continue lying, Jeff. And Mr. one man is not responsible for global inflation. <sighs> Canadian history. And now, on the eve of a by-election, sell out Jagmeet Singh wants you... That's three. ...to believe he's a changed man. Oh, and he insulted him in the process, but now he wants him to vote for non-confidence. Yeah. He's a to totally new person. Again, he's forgotten he's happy again. about everything he's been doing for two years. But notice, he will not commit to doing what actually matters, which is to say... Helping us win. with common sense conservatives to trigger a carbon tax election where Canadians across this country can vote in a national referendum on the carbon tax because that is what is coming. Never mind that we've already had two carbon tax elections. Yes. And, and who, who, which, which government was it that, that designed the carbon tax system? Again, originally, and there was no rebates for Canadians. Which no. government was it again? Oh, that's right. Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Yeah, it seems these days the Conservatives seem to have a lot of regret of the things they did back then. They have a problem with the carbon tax that they themselves they proposed. They had the problem with the guy that they named as Governor General. They mm -hmm. have a problem mm -hmm. with the guy that they appointed as the Governor of Bank of Canada. They have a problem they have with a problem. the guy who's the Consul General in New York City because of the... You know, we saved $4 million. <laughs> yes, and they have a problem with uh, the Aga Khan, who they made an honorary citizen. Gee, yeah. conservatives don't seem all that proud of their record when they were in power under Harper, don't they? Curious. Okay, we are five minutes in. I had 10 minutes, and then I had to shut it off. We're five minutes in. Because the first 12 minutes, I think, was 12 or 13 minutes was, was uh, en français. Okay. Jagmeet Singh has a message. Wait. That's four. Wait until he gets his pension. <laughs> you can't pay your rent after the end. Speaks the man who had a lifelong golden handcuff, golden parachute pension at the age of 31. Mm -hmm. who's, who, who said you should only serve two terms maximum, who's been there for 20 years and has nothing to show for it. Okay, we'll continue. NDP liberals doubled it. Wait one more year as your bank account drains and your overdraft grows. If your kid is going to school hungry, like one in four already are according to the government's own information, tell the kid to wait. Because Jagmeet Singh oh my God. needs his pension. Well, see, the only reason Pierre Polyev won't tell the kid to wait is because Pierre Polyev told the kid never. Never. Don't Never. wait. It ain't gonna happen. Sorry, got nothing for you. But hey, let me know how those bootstraps are working for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, who was it? Uh, late Senator Hugh Siegel, the book he wrote that I've got on order. Bootstraps need boots. Holy fuck. And he needs a year to get it. If you're living on dangerous streets, 
where crime and chaos have been unleashed by NDP liberal catch and release policies. Uh, statistically speaking, crime is down. Or you're witnessing the latest drug overdose death or the violence that came out of the uh, drug den in Kingston that killed oh, multiple people, of innocent people. Jake? Yeah, there's um, nothing he won't use for his benefit. And remember this, remember this. These uh, safe consumption sites are not federal. They're provincial. So he okay. keeps saying he's going to cancel. He can't. They're provincial programs. They're not, it has nothing to do with the federal government. These are provincially started, operated, and funded programs, of which Doug Ford is closing 10 of them. Okay, but with regard to Kingston. Yes. Okay, because uh, our friend, JB. Yes. This is his hometown. Exactly. And I'm he was here. not taking it. I'm here. Okay, one. You know it's bad when police need to release a statement saying the integrated care hub in Kingston isn't getting bulldozed despite what mainly conservative individuals are perpetrating online. Number one, the Kingston police had to put a statement out, have become aware of information become circulated online by word of mouth indicating there is a plan to clear and or bulldoze the encampment site located on the grounds behind the integrated care hub later today. This information is incorrect. Kingston police are continuing to investigate a double homicide that occurred in the area of the integrated care hub, and the police presence in this area is to preserve crime scene integrity and collect evidence. Police are asking individuals to remain away from the area of the crime scene and not to obstruct the Kingston police with their investigation. And with JB, because Pierre posted uh, this mm -hmm. kind of tweet right here that I'll put up so that the kids can see, Mr. Grizzly. You pretty much similar it. to what he said in his speech, but go yeah, ahead. Pretty much. It's a devastating news from Kingston. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Devastating news from Kingston with two people murdered and another hospitalized after an attack outside a Trudeau-funded drug death. Okay, again, provincially funded programs. My thoughts are with the families of the victims and the people of Kingston living with this crime and chaos. Bad hard drugs closed this drug den. Okay. You misspelled overdose prevention center. Yes. Uh, and two, if your thoughts are with the families of the victims and the people of Kingston, I am sure you thought of contacting the families of the victims to get the permission to do this with the memory of their dearly departed loved ones and uh, the person who was injured to get their permission to use their pain for your own personal gain. Right? Mm -hmm. If your thoughts were really with the families, you would have been in contact with the families and you would have gotten permission to do this. Right? Yeah, we know he didn't do that. So, to this, our friend JB, I absolutely despise Pierre Polyev with a passion. I put up with his bullshit and lies every day. But when he goes after my hometown, that's where I get mad. Pierre, disrespectfully, keep my goddamn city out of your mouth, especially when you don't know what the hell is going on. Kingston has several federal correctional institutions, a large military presence, and is a common meeting point for people transiting between Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto. While at its core, Kingston is and always will be a safe middle-class city filled with rich history and beautiful architecture. Unfortunately, because of the aforementioned institutions and the growing issues with opioid addiction, Kingston, like many other cities, is seeing a rise in addiction-related issues. Despite your attempt to politically boogeyman safe injection sites, the reality is that this ICH, where this brutal attack took place, saves lives. Without it, more people would die on the streets than what this terrible altercation took. It must be hard for you to comprehend this data. Numbers are hard for conservative brain to process. But since you don't have a damn plan for those suffering from addiction aside from putting them through the criminal system, which doesn't help them and still causes them to potentially OD, then maybe keep your mouth shut about this stuff. Also, this ICH has uh, gone through the public health system, which the federal government doesn't have control over. It's provincial. Until you can understand the unique challenge the opioid crisis is doing to a place like Kingston and have a realistic plan that curbs usage and gets those into treatment, keep my city out of your mouth. Now... It also seems that uh, we have found out since that 
the murder was not committed by someone at the encampment. Correct. Correct. So, um, has nothing to do. No, but it doesn't matter. He'll make political hay out of it. Yes. And unfortunately, it seems that the mayor of Kingston is in on it too. Great. Because before it became public that the person that committed this crime was not from the encampment and not sure if it's been confirmed that they're not a client of the ICH, uh, but they're definitely not from the encampment. The mayor of Kingston is basically saying uh, he wants uh, the ICH uh, injection site shut down. Yeah. So um, let me see if I get this correct. Rush to judgment with zero proof. Where have we seen and heard that before? That was when uh, the car in Buffalo. He alleged terrorist attack. No, it wasn't that at all. Not even close. Not even in the realm of that statement. But he's rushed to judgment and go quickly and accuse right away with zero proof. Why? Because it makes him look like a strong man. Mm-hmm. See, according here to the Ottawa Citizen, court documents list the accused address as being an apartment, an apartment near the crime scene. Chief of Kingston Police Scott Frazier said this person was known to police and frequented the ICH encampment and encampment area. So, yeah. So it was a, a user of the services, mm-hmm. but not a member of the encampment. So I guess... Okay, let's let's continue for uh, a few minutes, and then we'll just kill it. Big Meat Singh's message to them: Wait, it's the fifth time. Wait, wait until he gets his pension before we can re- reverse the carnage that the policies that he voted for and that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals keep in place caused in the first place. His message to our military, which is falling apart, is: Wait, wait until one more piece falls off the airplane. His message to Canadians is wait for his pension. My friends, we know what he will do. He will try to trick people in tomorrow. Okay. You've got to be kidding me. No, he said that. It was shortly after this that I'm like, I'm out. By elections. But I have a prediction that if Jagmeet Singh uh, six, gets the chance, six times. he will reverse himself once again and sell out the people to vote in in favor of this carbon tax coalition. Canadians cannot wait. They need to vote now for common sense conservatives and Jagmeet Singh needs to vote with us to trigger a carbon tax election now. So I'm gonna sit here and insult you and misname you seven times in less than 10 minutes. And then tell you what you need to do. Then tell you what you need to do. That's the definition of a bully. Mm -hmm. Also the definition of a fucking coward. Insult, 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 insult. Do what I tell you. It's abuser talk. This man has no spine, no ethics, no morals, and doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. He's a total narcissist. Complete and utter narcissist. And if he ever gets the reins of power in this country, we're all in deep shit. Is there more after that, or was there it just is. like applause and like no? Like, there's like, more. We'll we'll continue in just a minute. I just needed a a, a palate cleanse. Oh, no, no, I, 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 yeah. If you want to give me a moment, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee, and when I come back, we'll watch some more. All I'll right, be right back. So I'll give you a couple more uh, details here of uh, what happened uh, in Kingston. Um, so a 47-year-old man had been charged with second-degree murder and attempted murder after three people were attacked Thursday morning near the encampment. Um, he's been charged with second-degree murders of two people, one person named 38, uh, one person 38, one person 41, both of Kingston, and one count of attempted murder by striking the victim with a hammer. He appeared in bail court on Friday and was remanded to provincial custody. He has been forbidden from contacting 24 different people. 
Uh, court documents say his address is an apartment near the crime scene. Um, the ICH itself has been closed as the police have investigated the larger scene, as I reported earlier. On Thursday, just before 10.40 a.m., emergency services were called to the encampment and the area around the ICH where two men had been stabbed. Shortly after, crews and hub staff were called to help a woman on the sidewalk along Montreal Street who had been struck with a hammer. The man accused of attacking the three victims left the hammer next to the woman and ran across Montreal Street to an empty lot. Kingston police negotiated with the man for a safe surrender for nearly six hours before he was finally taken into custody. The victims were treated at the scene, then rushed to Kingston General Hospital by Frontenac paramedics with life-threatening injuries. The final living victim remained in critical condition. Her name was withheld to protect her privacy. Quote, the injuries are consistent with injuries one would receive from an edged weapon and blunt object, Kingston Police Constable Anthony Colindelli said. Uh, Staff at the Integrated Care Hub locked down their building after the attacks. Ted Robinson, board chair of Trellis HIV and Community Care, which operates the hub, said its staff were some of the first to respond and to give first aid to the victims. Quote, they just everything they could to support the people who were injured and the people who saw what was going on. He said their priority now was keeping their staff and those they served as safe as possible. Quote, it appears the ICH staff is doing a great job supporting their folk from a police aspect right now. Our focus is on ending this peacefully, then we can shift focus onto the victims and the community as a whole. Colin Jelly said police were examining two to three different scenes where the attacks took place. Hub staff said two of the scenes were within the encampment, while a residents in the area witnessed one attack on Montreal Street where blood has stained the pavement. In a photo provided to the Kingston Whig Standard, one of the victims was seen lying on the eastern sidewalk of Montreal Street with Kingston police and another woman providing first aid. A hammer with a black handle was on the ground next to her. Um, that uh, person lives close to the integrated care hubs. Uh, no, uh, a witness who lives close to the who lives north of the integrated care hub said that at about 10:44 a.m. she heard a commotion and scream outside her front door. Looking out, she saw a woman who had been riding a push scooter had been struck in the head with a hammer. She was screaming and bleeding profusely before being given medical attention. A man with a dog was across the street yelling at her. He kept saying, I'm sick of these people, McGinnis said. In a video provided to the Whig Standard, another witness was heard yelling at the man, you hit her with a hammer. Staff from the ICH ran over to help the woman as McGinnis recorded video of the man before he ran into the bush across the street. Quote, we never want to see this happen, but our goal now is just to end this as peacefully as possible. He added, uh, Colin Jelly said, he added later that he appreciated it was a very upsetting incident and one nobody wanted to see in their community. Quote, it's an awful day, Robinson said. Our staff is feeling this quite intensely. He said the staff at the Integrated Care Hub had undoubtedly been traumatized by what they'd witnessed, but that the incident was isolated. Quote, I just hope that people will not rush to any sort of judgment. They did, Robinson said. Quote, we know what has been going on provincially as far as places like the Integrated Care Hub that have consumption treatment sites and that are centers for people who use substances who are unhoused. And I just hope that people won't rush to judgment, assuming that this horrible situation is a reflection of that situation, because that's a much bigger provincial social societal issue, and this is completely separate from that in my mind. Mayor Brian Patterson did not seem to see it the same way, calling for the Integrated Care Hub and the Safe Injection Site to close immediately. Quote, I am absolutely horrified by the situation unfolding. This is an utterly senseless act of violence, said Patterson, who is also a member of the Kingston Police Services Board. It is no longer safe for people to use consumption and treatment services, and we need to respond, Patterson said. We as a city have been talking about the dangers of this encampment in and around the safe injection site for almost three years. There are community partners and advocates who have fought the city on every attempt we've made to clear this encampment and ensure public safety for those living there. I will not stand by and wait until more people die. Enough is enough. Let's, oh, let's, the irony. Let's, let's look at that for a second, if we shall. And they go, you know, this, you have an incident that takes place around uh, a cons- safe consumption site or something to that effect. An incident that takes a violent incident, a horrible, a horrible crime. Somebody lost their life. Two people. Two people. Okay. So let's look at that closely, shall we? They're blaming it all on the safe consumption site. Are we going to shut down every city street, every nightclub, every bar, every restaurant, every gathering place in public? Because those things happen almost every day in cities across this country in public spaces. Nobody's called to shut down bars, pubs, restaurants, nightclubs, cafes. 
Why not? Oh, I know why. Because those aren't poor people that he can punch down on. Those aren't homeless people he can punch down on. Those aren't people that he has total control over by eliminating those programs and causing their lives to get more miserable by the second. He won't shut down anything that generates income. But if it costs the public purse a cent, by the way, it saves us a lot of money in the long run. Mm -hmm. He's just going to make it cost poor if he closes it down. Yep. It will cost us more. It's been proven time and time again. There's not going to be less violence. There's not going to be less fewer needles in park. There's not going to be less dead bodies. No, there'll be more They'll because people will be way. using in alleys. People will be using in back rooms, in alleys, in, in flop houses. It's Public just bathrooms. going to get worse, but he's made it look better because it's not happening around that center. They, they, they don't look at the bigger picture here because they're so short-sighted. And again, he has convinced something. He is convinced of something. He's like Doug Ford. Well, I just don't believe it. You can show him all the evidence to counter his argument, and he still won't listen to you because he's a total narcissist and will only believe what he wants to believe. And if it suits his narrative, he believes it. If it doesn't suit his narrative, he dismisses it. This is who uh, we're dealing with. And then he says, we need to clear the encampment, close the safe injection site and the integrated care hub until we can find a better way to support our most vulnerable residents and work with the province to provide treatment and housing solutions. Not even until we can find another way, we can find a better way. You're not going to. No. No, they won't find a better way. They don't give a shit. They're they not going to, to because every, every, well, in every other way, doesn't treat people like they're human beings. Right. Forced treatment, the whole tricky thing about forced treatment is, especially with this situation, right, you're supposed to protect people who are a danger to others and danger to themselves. Mm -hmm. That's how we have forced committal. Mm -hmm. But there's, at what point does the issue of addiction become I mean, you can say from the second you're addicted, you're a danger to yourself. You can make mm -hmm. it, right? Yes. So where does that line? But then, with this particularly with addiction, because there are, when you're addicted, like it gets into your brain, it's into your blood, it's into, mm -hmm. right? So when it's something that's health-wise, in addition to that, this thing needs to be done in such a way that lets the people, if you're going to do forced treatment, being forced into treatment, have the best possible chance of success. And it seems that the one thing that anybody that knows anything about addiction knows is that nobody is going to get unaddicted unless they actually want to. Correct. Correct. And Ms. Shattuck's statement here, the problem also is that when people think of addicts, they immediately think of the homeless. Yet there's a huge chunk of us who struggle with major addictions and hide it well. There are more people in white-collar jobs that have addictions than there are people living on the street with addictions. Tell me I'm wrong. And then prove to me that I'm wrong. You know you can't. You know you can't. Because if anybody's ever worked in an office or on a construction site, I guarantee you, You've worked with people who have addiction issues, whether it's drugs or alcohol or a combination thereof. I was working on a construction site a number of years ago, a big construction site, and there was a guy putting in hanging rod for the drop ceiling that would go in later. So he's up 20 feet in the air on a scissor lift, driving the scissor lift around and just putting the rods in. Smoking a joint while doing it. Now look, you want to smoke a joint, go ahead, I don't care, that's your business. This was, by the way, this is prior to it being legal. Mm. But there is not a construction site in this country that will allow for that. Right. They are no drugs, no alcohol on the construction site because it's dangerous. Because if you're high and you're operating a scissor lift 20 feet in the air, you're impaired. Your mm. judgment is off. 
It's no different than drinking whiskey and then doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because your judgment is off and you are impaired. Period. I know people that have, have done the drinking and driving thing. I don't know many people that have done the driving while high thing. Mm. Most people I know who have used cannabis, the last thing they want to do is get behind the wheel. That's why they use DoorDash or Uber Eats or skip the dishes or whatever the case may be. Because they're like, I can't drive, I'm too high. I've heard that from so many people. Mm -hmm. And now people, I think these days are going, well, I can't drive, I've had too much to drink. I'll take an Uber home and I'll get in my car in the morning. More and more people are doing that. We still have drunk driving incidents and that's probably never, ever going to go away. Because yeah, some but people- they're down substantially. Substantially. Since campaign started. Yes. And, and the younger generations that are coming up absolutely will not take part in that. They just don't. Mm. So that's it, you know? Yeah. Okay, we'll continue with Skippy yes. for a couple more minutes and then, uh, and then we'll discuss um, something else. And Justin Trudeau, he's just gone carbon tax crazy. We saw what he did. We saw what he did uh, at his caucus meeting. It wasn't just Rocky. They brought out another celebrity, carbon tax Carney, right? Just to show how obsessed Trudeau is with the tax, he brought in one of the greatest carbon tax supporters in the world, carbon tax Carney, who said in his book, the Canadian federal carbon pricing framework is a model for others. One of the most important initiatives is carbon pricing. The best approach is a revenue neutral, progressive carbon tax, right? And uh, of course, <laughs> right, the revenue neutral carbon tax, like uh, Ogopogo, you, you know, uh, the, mo the Loch Ness Monster. You hear about them, but you never actually see it anywhere. Um, and so carbon tax Carney has one disagreement with the Trudeau government. He was against pausing the carbon tax on home heating. Carbon tax Carney's only disagreement is that he wants the carbon tax to be bigger and higher and apply to more things. And now he's the one advising Justin Trudeau on the economy. Has he not read the finance department report, which showed that the carbon tax is subtracting $25 billion from our GDP, about 14. No. That is just complete hogwoggle. That is a total lie because the money goes back to people who then spend it yes. in the economy. Well, he, he's going to leave that out because it doesn't suit and, his narrative. And then the money goes to institutions like hospitals and schools and whatnot like this so that they can make changes that they need in order to become more green, which requires contractors to do which they pay, which puts money in the economy. Which, you know, we had that whole heat pump program where you get a rebate through Atlantic Canada, which averages just for Atlantic Canada to buy votes. No, that's across the country. It started in Atlantic Canada because most people have oil heating, which we know is the dirtiest heat there is. Mm. Well, that's the, that's that one program, but the heat pro, he, the heat pump rebate specifically under the Canada Greener Homes program, we got that mm -hmm. when we put ours in. That was for everyone. And how much did your uh, your uh, billing drop last winter for for? Uh... Well, I don't know. This is going to be the first winter we're going to do it. But at the, okay. last winter, you got it in the spring, like, did you? Yeah, we got. Well, we got it in. Uh, oh no! Wait a minute. No, 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 no. We did get it in October. Yes, you yes, got it last but, fall. Yes, I got yeah. it in October. Yes, I, I, yeah, I didn't do a winter to winter. I, I when I looked at it, I did it. Uh, it was March, March, April was near the end when I presented right. it on the show. But yes, I, I should have done a, a mid. Well, you can get to that at a later date. Yeah, to absolutely. Show the difference, right? Number one and number two. Uh, but, I mean, the difference was huge. Did, didn't your cooling costs drop tremendously too? Actually, we haven't looked at that this year. We should do that. <laughs> your hydro costs have, have exponentially dropped due to the fact that you're not using an air conditioner, you're using the heat pump, which right. also cools in the summer. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. That, is, that is correct. Right. That is correct. It does both. It's a twofer. It's a twofer. <laughs> I wonder how soon before we start seeing older apartment buildings installing heat pumps outside the windows. We love ours. Well, I mean, we have, you know, older buildings have installed, you know, the cooling right. air conditioner that, the, you know, the, it looks just like a heat pump. 
the air conditioner, yep. you see them from LG and, and so on and so forth. I wonder if we'll start seeing heat pumps on the outside of older apartment buildings so that they can get rid of the yep. window air conditioners. Yep, we will. I think that would be a good program. But that's just me. It would cool and heat. And it would cool your entire apartment, unlike me who has to have two air conditioners, one in the bedroom, one in the living room, to keep the place cool on days when it's 37 degrees outside. Let's continue for just another moment or two, and then we'll wrap up this part of the show with Skippy, because he's really under my skin right now. $1,500 per family. This... Let's back that up a bit. Has he not read the finance department report, which showed that the carbon tax is subtracting... $25 billion from our GDP, about $1,400 per family this year alone, a number that will rise to an annual $30 billion a year. If he had any economic prowess at all, he would stop being carbon tax carny, he would break off with this costly coalition government, and he would ex understand that the only future for our economy and our country is the common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Okay, a little, that's about enough of that shit. A little note, uh, Mark Carney is the United Nations Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance. Yeah, how many degrees does he have again? He has his doctorate too, if memory serves. Um, which one of these guys has uh, multiple degrees and uh, decades of experience working in high finance and works for the UN? And which one of these guys is a lifelong minion for Stephen Harper who lies every day and every time he opens his mouth? Yeah, and I got to kick Chris here. I was in Bucharest last winter. Every old apartment has heat pumps. There you go. Hmm. Must be a Romanian thing. Yeah. Well, no, well <laughs> this thing, I've I've seen it in other countries. I've yeah. not seen it here yet. Yeah. Which is why I'm thinking you'll start to see it here because in my building currently, heat is included. We're on a big boiler system, and the new owners of my building won't want to pay for that, so they'll put heat pumps in, and make us pay for it. Hmm. Guess what? I'll get a heat pump in, but I ain't paying for it. I don't own the building. I don't own my apartment. You want to put a heat pump in? Knock yourself out. I'm not giving you one red cent towards it. That's your building upgrade. And I know that they're going to try and jack our rent when our leases come due for long-time current residents because of the fact that um, they're spending a lot of money to redo the apartments. They're turning two bedrooms into three bedrooms, one bedrooms into two bedrooms, and bachelor or studio apartments into one bedrooms. My apartment right now is... Uh, if it's turned into a one, a two bedroom, they are charging $2,500 a month. Mm. That's more than double what I pay right now. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my sister about this yesterday. She goes, my mortgage is $1,800 a month. You can't save enough money to get a down payment because your rent is so exponentially high and you can afford to pay your rent, but they won't qualify you for a mortgage, which would be less money because yeah. you don't have the down payment because you which, can't save the down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the, at least uh, with the mortgage rule changes that came about, the prime minister has made it so that at least your rent uh, having paid your, your rent yes. yeah, goes towards your credit. Yes. So at least there's that. But There are programs that have been doing that for a little while now. Coho features something like that, and I believe e EQ Bank is doing something along those lines. But Coho, which is a, a financial institution that I've been using for a number of years now, has a program where they can apply your rent to your credit rating, which has long okay. since been overdue. You know, if you can afford to pay your rent, which is more than a mortgage, why can't you afford a mortgage? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what I was All trying right. to say there, so ineloquent, Willie, I'll, just, I'll wrap it up in a sec here. What I was trying to say was they're, they're, they're going to want to raise our rent exponentially because they've done all this work on the building. But here's the thing. None of it benefits me. So why should I pay for it? Right. This is not the federal government where we pay taxes into a system that helps everybody. This is a private for-profit industry. I'm not going to subsidize it for you. I'm going mm -hmm. to continue to pay my rent. You can raise it the maximum of 2%. If you raise it beyond that, you will be hearing from the landlord tenant board, bureau, uh, board uh, lawyer that we hire. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. All right. Uh, I had a few things, but yeah. you said that there was another thing that you had that we would talk about. So, Well, I wanted to, to uh, at least address, uh, address the, uh, the rumors. 
and I, we don't like to address rumors, but it's the amount of people coming out and say this assassination attempt was oh. staged. Yeah. Now, the rumor about the first one, I mean, it just keeps floating about. I don't think this incident was staged. I don't know that this man was actually trying to attempt an assassination. It is a open carry, stand your ground state, the state of Florida. So, you know, there's a lot of fishiness about it. He didn't fire mm-hmm. a shot. He was shot at. So, you know, I keep well, seeing from, strange from what images I can tell, on the, on, online. Go ahead. Okay. From what I can tell, the reason why he didn't fire a shot is that, uh, well, one of the reasons, general, when you're the president of the United States, secret security, secret service will go down like this and will like close mm-hmm. the entire golf course. Correct. Right. Because this happened at a golf course in West Palm Beach. Uh, but when you're no longer president anymore, your security tail is closer to you. So they're basically clearing, they're walking ahead, clearing one or two holes ahead. So the person was waiting at a hole ahead, so they didn't have a shot yet. So that's why no shots were fired. Okay, so as it was, let's say like Trump was on the 12th hole, the mm-hmm. Secret Service had gone up to the 13th hole to check that if it was okay and whatnot like this. And that's when they spotted well. So while it could have been a dangerous situation, the, uh, Mr. Trump wasn't in any particular immediate no. danger at any point. So that's, uh, that, that would explain that part. Um, so yes, uh, it all came out with, uh, you know, uh, there was a person in the vicinity of which like prompted jokes while she, I mean, it's Florida. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's an open carry state. It's like if there aren't shots going on in the vicinity of anywhere, it's, it's Florida. Um, so it's like, uh, but yes, I mean, and even I, I will admit it was like, you know what? Uh, I skeptic. wish I could be moved, but yeah. I mean, the last time where he actually was somewhat shot or shots were actually fired in his direction, mm-hmm. it was at most a two or three day story. And, and he, he didn't really care about it anymore all that much. Um, I find it hard to be moved by shots in the vicinity of. Well, and again, and, and it's hypocritical. Yes. Yes. But it's hypocritical, right? Because the politicians think, right? We, we keep on saying like this, the violence is not the answer. This type of thing should not be happening and it should not be happening. doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It doesn't even matter because, you know, we despise the guy, you know, it's, uh, but yes, I will admit I am human. I was unmoved by mm-hmm. the vicinity. Now, again, if it had been a similar incident to Pennsylvania, then yes, of course. I mean, I was moved then and I moved now. Yes. Uh, but in the vicinity, I was like, uh, yeah, okay, and. Uh, and yeah. the thing is, is that this happened on the same day where earlier in the day, J.D. Vance went on TV, I believe it was NBC, and was asked about the Taylor Swift thing. Was it the Taylor Swift thing? No, about the, the, the cats, the, the eating the dogs, the eating the cats thing. Yes, and basically confirming that it's not true. The person that even posted the, the thing originally turns out that it wasn't, it was like somebody from somebody who had said that, and she said, oh my God, I never thought that this would happen by posting it and like removed it until he didn't feel terrible about it. So, I mean, this is like so completely debunked. And he basically went on TV and said, you know, like this, well, you know, yeah, sure, I'll make shit up if it'll bring attention to a subject. Yeah, he point blank said that. Pretty much, not, that's not a direct quote. No, no. But pretty much said that, and then we get news of shots in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. You'll pardon me if, and you'll pardon the world if they thought, like, you know, what's like, yeah, you know what? You tried it the first time like this. You had the opportunity. You squandered it. You thought you were going to, like, rock it in the debate. You didn't, and now you need something. So, hey, let's try that thing again. Mm-hmm. I could forgive people for having that first instinct, especially if they saw the interview or heard about the interview. So yeah, we straight up make shit up. Yeah. (laughs) So Uh, (laughs) I understand the skepticism. I do. Because even I'm beginning to wonder, especially the first attempt, because they, they pointed out to the police, there's a man on that roof with a gun and they did nothing. Yeah. They let it happen. So, but, this is, and you know, 
an actual incident around 2 p.m. Eastern on that day. The Secret Service team was securing a scene for a few holes ahead of the former president when the uh, an alleged gun, when the alleged gunman was spotted. Uh, they had an uh, AK-47 style rifle, a backpack containing ceramic plates, and a GoPro that were recovered near the scene uh, as he uh, fled. But a witness took a photo of the suspect's license plate as he drove away, which allowed the police to locate and detain him. Um, the county sheriff uh, said that uh, he would describe the suspect as having a flat affect and not displaying a lot of emotions. Um, never said, like, you know, never even said, like, okay, well, what's the issue, officer, or something? It's like, just, there was nothing really going on there. Or, or maybe just like, yeah, okay, you got me, or whatever it is. Uh, it seems that he's a, a person uh, in his 50s from Hawaii, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know, uh, I'm not familiar enough with the story to know if the whole debate, uh, you know, because usually when this happens again, is it a Republican, is it a Democrat? But you got people like uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene already, because like with the nebulous they, they tried to kill the president twice. Uh, who was the first they again? Yeah. Who was they? Um, so yeah, uh, and it seemed that the rifle had a uh, scope. Um, Donald Trump has put out two fundraising emails since confirming that he is safe and well. Vice President uh, Kamala Harris put out a statement expressing her relief that her rival was safe and underscoring that violence has no place in America. Uh, President Biden also uh, released a statement uh, saying that um, he has called on the Secret Service to provide anything that would be needed in order to keep Trump safe. So uh, the Democrats are doing the right things in terms of not wanting to say something that would create any interference in the campaign or create some noise. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much... Uh, the gist of it there's probably going to be more coming out uh as this is uh because the suspect was detained uh not shot not killed so uh potentially we will get some news or information as to motive um apparently the you know journalists have been doing the things like a poker scanning through the social media accounts and apparently this person has written posts that were critical of donald trump uh, that's about pretty much all I know. I don't know if they were critical because he was a true believer that felt that Donald Trump wasn't true believing enough or just somebody who doesn't like Trump. Um, it's, and I, it's like yeah. poli and politically opposed. So those details are not out because the first one, that was, that was a question given he was wearing um, a T-shirt from a Second uh, Amendment uh, sort of YouTube channel or whatnot. Maybe they thought that, you know, maybe the motivation could have been that he felt that the president wasn't doing enough to protect the Second Amendment and needed to get his attention somehow. Right? So you don't know. But, uh, and the other person we knew, it seems so, it seems that they were someone who was leaning Republican in the first place. This one, this one we don't know. Or maybe if we do, I've not stumbled across it yet because the information's coming out really fast and furious on this. But, that's basically um, that's basically the thing. Um, uh, I, you know, the, the thing is that with this guy, there's so many lies and so many setups and so many schemes and frauds and that it's yeah, it's hard to believe anything. That's yeah, exactly. But that's the whole point, right? The, that's the whole point of this type of strategy is that you you nothing is knowable. So just believe what I tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe what I tell you to believe. Right? It's to, it's to create. It's not to create the situation where everything everybody else says is wrong. It's just like the truth is not knowable. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Really, it could be this. Maybe there was two people at that voting station that traded a vial and that traded little USB things. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe the voting machines were hacked by Venezuela. Who knows? Maybe. Right? But that's the whole thing. It's the who knows maybe. Like this. Can you really know? Really? 
Can you? What about the microwaves and 5G? Somebody's interfering with that. Who knows? <laughs> but that but that's the point. It's the who knows. It's the, the create the, the point the point is is that the problem is is that it no longer is a reasonable doubt. Right? It's like a healthy dose of skepticism, I'm all for. Oh yes, of course. Keyword healthy. Healthy dose of skepticism. <laughs> <laughs> not skepticism at any cost or at any price or not, you know, skepticism for the sake of it, just a healthy dose. You know, consult more than one source, cross-reference stuff. If you see something that doesn't jive, ask a question maybe. <laughs> you know? But, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's all bad. And there's this, uh, there's always some cabal somewhere. Right? Falling, it's, 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 it's like, geez, man. It's like see, the thing I don't understand is like it's like aren't you tired yet? Aren't you exhausted I from am. all this spinning? Like the people who are doing it, aren't you tired? I just think of that movie in The Help. Like this was, aren't you? When she's like talking to that racist lady and says, "Aren't you tired mm. of having to maintain that?" Like, does that not drain you? I don't know how it couldn't. Ugh, ugh. Um, good news, uh, the Air Canada and the union representing its pilots agreed on a tentative contract. So, yes, so it looks like there will be no strike, which is yes, good. This yes, is ratified good. the deal would prevent the shutdown of Canada's largest headline. The deal would add about, I'm hearing numbers between $1.5 billion and $1.9 billion mm -hmm. to salaries over its four-year lifespan. And the union represents, I've been hearing, between 5,200 and 5,400 uh, people. Um, it ends the standoff over pay and benefits. The deal came shortly before midnight and a potential upcoming shutdown. Uh, now it seems that Air Canada pilots were first offered 30% and that, again, people would turn around and say, and you turned that down? And it's like, well, yeah, because for about the last 10 years, they've been stuck at 2% and, you know, there's competition between various nations and uh, the U.S. pilots got a really, really, really good deal. So they turned around, you know, and said, um, yeah, we need some more. Like this, and one of these things that were based on it seems like in the United States, I think they got forty five percent or something like that. Um, you know, you know, if there's that much of a gap, you know, people just go work elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, it seems that uh, the deal, the terms of the deal, are uh, not clear, but rumors are word on the tweet is that the pilots got about forty two percent on this. Um, so, and it seems that uh, people are happy. Air Canada says that the two sides had already reached consensus on most issues over months of negotiating, but the big one was wage increases. That was the main barrier. Um, so the terms of the agreement will remain on confidential until the deal is ratified by the pilots. But the union did say if ratified, the deal would mean about a billion and a half more dollars for pilots over a four-year agreement. So there you go. Um, this is good. The deal also includes improved benefits. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, the deal there. And it seems that uh, in other airlines, uh, there are maybe 50,000 uh, machinists in the U.S. Uh, from Boeing that rejected a 25% increase and then uh, and went on strike. So uh, oh. as if the news isn't bad enough for Boeing. Boeing just keeps getting worse. Maybe, 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 um, maybe moving the corporate offices out of the headquarters was a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe well, having individuals run the company who knew nothing about how the company actually operates just so that they could turn a higher profit margin was a bad idea. Oh, that was sarcasm on my part, by the way. Yes. I was being um, sarcastic. Mr. Grizzly, do you have to go suit? I know you mentioned before we started the show that you had an out time. Yeah, I got to leave in about five minutes. I have a meeting coming up. That okay. May, may lead to a job. I'm not sure. We're hopeful, 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 wishful. Send in, send in, send in the good vibes. We'll see. Well, we'll see. You know. well, send in the good vibes, though. If it's a job, hey. All right, get some gobs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you do not want to miss an episode, you do not have to, thanks to The Ray Girl, because she sponsors our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, when you go there and click subscribe, we come straight to you when we have a fresh episode. 
And you can also get there by scanning that QR code that Mr. Grizzly has just magically made appear under my chin. If you would like to support us in other ways, then you need to make like our good friend Kit Elaine and surf yourself on down to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page where we have three buttons for you. Ask Kit Cassie. She knows about the buttons. Like, share, subscribe. If you click them, we get ourselves some happy. And don't you want to make your beaver happy? I think and so. your grizzly too. <laughs> Happy beaver is a very productive beaver. That's all I will say. And if you would like to help us in yet another way, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's Head will bring you to our coffee page. That's coffee, K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash E beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And if you go there, you will find our tip jar. And we would really appreciate it if you left us a little something to, you know, encourage us to do more. Let us know that you like the show. Yeah. Buy us a cup of coffee. Give us a add a critter, a good pat on the head. Makes us very happy. But if you're not able to contribute financially, that is quite all right because the gift of your attention and participation are the ones that we appreciate the most and we really do cherish them. And we want to hear from you. So please write to us, TrueNorthEagerBeaver at gmail.com. Also, you can write to us on our Twitter feed at TrueEager, at our Facebook page, True North Eager Beaver, or you can leave a comment right here on our YouTube page if you happen to be listening there. We do read everything, and we thank you for all your suggestions and when you share good news with us and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, And recipes. Thank you, Kid Elaine. <laughs> all the good stuff. So uh, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, we are very, very grateful for everything that you do for us. Because democracy is something that you do, today is by election day in Elmwood Transcoda and La Salle ville mar Verdun. Uh, it seems that uh, Mr. Uh, Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau, made some comments uh, uh, going after Francois Legault over the weekend on the language issue. So it, it seems that uh, he is uh, trying to get involved in running against the province to try and stimulate a couple of people to come in at the last minute. This is very, very, very political uh, mm -hmm. timing of that. Um, so uh, it seems that the Bloc Québécois thinks that they have a chance if they get a perfect vote split. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, there. Um, of course, Bay of Quinty by-election three days from now, if you're in Ontario, that's for the provincial government, and Ward 19 nominations close uh, on the 19th. By the way, uh, Ward 19, Ward 15 in Toronto, sorry, by-election. And if you're interested in that, actually, uh, on the Frequency Podcast Network, uh, they have a podcast called The Big Story, and today's story actually f uh, features uh, the by-election in Ward 15. So if you want to hear a little bit about that, we recommend that. Um, I think that's all for me. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have uh, some words of wisdom? Hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I sound like a broken record when I keep repeating this same thing over and over again, but it's the wisest words I can give you is that you need to help us spread the message that one of the Leaders of a political party in Canada is lying to you daily and does not get held out for it. He does not get held the task for it. And this happens every single time he opens his mouth. And the fact that he doesn't get held the task for it is upsetting to us because Canadians are being misled. The whole purpose and the reason we have this show is to help keep people informed. So we're asking you to try and spread the information, spread the word, spread the information, let people know we're here to try and get you the truth and nothing but the truth constantly giving you the truth because you're being lied to and it angers me so and it upsets me so that people will vote against their own best interests because they're not well informed you can't make a good decision if you're not informed our, our, our reason to exist here this show is to keep people informed so please help us spread the word help us get the message out we're going to get things wrong from time to time, and we'll fully admit it and apologize for it when we do that. But we will always, always give you the true facts, even the ones we don't like, because that's who we are. So that's my words of wisdom, please. And I know I sound like a broken record because I keep repeating it, but I can't stress this enough. 
with the amount of mis and disinformation coming out of the, uh, of the conservative party, the reform party under a new name, we need to get people informed so that they can make an informed decision. We will never tell you how to vote. We will ask you, we will ask you to vote. We beg you to vote. It's important that you vote. Don't we let will the strongly decide. recommend a couple of people not to vote for. Well, we'll recommend people not to vote for, but we're not telling you to not do that. If you, you know, look, if you are hell bent on voting conservative in the next election, I probably can't do anything to change your mind. But do keep in mind that he said he would do the exact opposite of everything the prime minister has done. That means, and when they pressed Andrew Shear yesterday, asking him, would he cancel the dental program? He did his best uh, line dancing two-step to avoid answering that question. Yes, and if you can't say that you're not going to do it, you are. You're going to do it. All right. Um, just a little thing from me. And yes, uh, Mr. Jim, just, just, yes. Yes, sir, we will get you more. It's just we had to deal with that thing today. Yes. Yes, indeed. More speechy stuff from people other than PP. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, congratulations, to Team Canada. Davis Cup well, won all three uh, of their rubbers uh, against uh, Argentina, Finland, and uh, Great Britain. Uh, so there was a rematch between Felix and uh, Mr. Draper. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, Felix uh, was uh, the clear winner this time, I believe. Um, so uh, yes, Canada moves on to uh, the top eight, and that tournament will take place in November in Malaga, Spain. So uh, there you go. Um, I think that's all I have. Oh, and yes, I had a little word of wisdom of my own. Um, the, the kits among us who are watching, who have decided to run for something and have, uh, discovered that they have the attention of certain people who seem to be going through their social media history and wanting to try to find something that they can twist and twerk and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't get mad. Take it as a very, very high compliment that apparently you are saying things that some people feel that they need to dedicate themselves to silencing and that you are people they feel that they need to work to discredit. And then just go on on your campaign and live your merry lives. Exactly. All right. That's all I got. Mr. Grizzly, please cue the cock and I'm proud of you. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Okay, I didn't know if we were going to do an Easter egg. I got a quick one. If I you're going one. to be watching by-election returns tonight, um, know that uh, if because they have that long list ballot thing in Montreal, it's probably going to be like the last one. Results won't start coming in until way past your bedtime. So if you're watching something, however, uh, the Elmwood Transcoda data is probably going to come in before the Montreal one because there isn't that much of a long ball longest ballot campaign over there. So the returns on that one might come in as we normally expect them to in that time frame but the Montreal ones will probably be late like uh, the Toronto St. Paul's one mm -hmm. were. I have a quick hit for you. You'll get a, you'll, I think you'll enjoy this. Okay. From uh, Dread Tory, James mm -hmm. Parsons. Remember, in quotes, he's just visiting, Michael Ignatieff, born and raised in Canada, wasn't Canadian enough for the CPC. Yet, Elon Musk, who spent about 40 months in Canada, is a quintessentially Canadian native son with an unquestionable right to be granted huge government contracts. This is the kind of degrading BS you need to be willing to swallow as a CPC supporter. Quite apart from the queasy spectacle of CPC MPs goading Musk, a disinfo spewing Trumpist plutocrat with the moral compass of a pimp, into launching puerile interventions in Canadian politics. 
Indeed. And that has something to do with uh, the Telesat deal that was announced uh, last Friday, Correct. which we'll talk about on a future show. Yes, so we don't will. worry, we haven't missed it. No, we will get to it. All right, we'll see you. Hey, kids. <laughs>